I'd like this to last a while. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to our uh, March 23rd meeting of Economic Growth and Development. Uh, can I first get a motion to approve the minutes of our prior committee meeting? Uh, uh, Supervisor Smith, seconded by uh, uh, Supervisor Strau. Uh, all, those in, all those in favor? All right. Uh, uh, pri any privilege of the floor? Anyone wish to make any comments to the board? Seeing none, uh, um, why don't we first of all start with Lisa, Liza, if we can, please. Thank you, Chairman. Good Thank afternoon, you. everybody. I just have uh, one resolution before you today, but I also have several other updates. Um, the first resolution, or the only resolution, is uh, a housekeeping item we do every spring to add temporary positions for summer youth employment program and our training slots for the upcoming program year. As a friendly reminder, our program year is July 1 to June 30th. So this resolution is for that. Very fine. Can I get a resolution? Uh, okay. Supervisor Wild, second by Supervisor Strau. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to provide some updates around workforce development for uh, what's going on this spring. You may have seen we have several high school job fairs happening. Sorry, I can't hear. Um, we had our first high school job fair with Queensbury High School. Eighth graders also participated for a total of uh, an estimated 1,250 students. Um, and uh, about 30 businesses registered, but we had around 25 who showed up. And um, they definitely were able to, to get potential employees for, um, for their summer jobs. Our next one was, uh, is with Lake George High School, Warrensburg, Bolton, and Hadley Luzerne will also be attending the Lake George High School job fair. Um, and then our final one will be at Glens Falls High School. Um, each fair is a little bit different, and we're also having some career industry speakers at the Glens Falls High School Fair, so we're super excited about that. Um, summer youth employment applications are also out, so please spread the word in your respective municipalities. Um, all of the school districts have received the application, uh, and as you know, that's a really valuable program for um, many of our, our youth in the summer who pay their salaries, so it's free help for businesses and municipalities. Um, finally, I, I just wanted to um, reiterate how transportation is our second biggest barrier to employment. Uh, number one, in my professional opinion, is housing in our community. Number two is transportation, and I would say number three is child care. And um, this committee, in the, in the past presentations by CDTA and the City of Fence Falls, Greater Fence Falls Transit, this committee has unanimously supported that merge, um, and I, I want to remind this committee of that as this continues to be um, something that we're considering to address our transportation challenges. We know that Warren County is dependent on tourism revenue, uh, tourism industry is dependent on a workforce, and the workforce is dependent on transportation, and, and especially public transportation. Uh, in all municipalities in our county, have transportation gaps. Um, we have worked with CDTA on the bike share program the last two years, as you know, which has been very successful. Any concern we had, they addressed it. They have been phenomenal partners and communicators and collaborators with that initiative. And I have no concerns that they will do the same if the um, merge continues. Um, schedules are an issue for our workforce, bus schedules. I have been told more than once that businesses should create their work schedules around the bus schedule, and that is not feasible or realistic. We need expanded bus schedules and expanded routes um, for our workforce, and, and many of our departments at Warren County are budgeting for transportation. My department, DSS, Office for the Aging, Veterans, and probably more are spending money on transportation. So if we are able to resolve many of our challenges by merging with CDTA, um, it is going to have a huge return on investment for all of our residents, our workforce, our J1 workers who come here every summer. Um, and I just really want to continue to encourage this committee to um, get your questions answered for sure, and but continue to think about how this merge will support everybody in our community, but especially our workforce that we're dependent on for our economy and our county revenue. 
Um, and if you decide it's not something that you're willing to do, then I'm hoping to see an alternative because these challenges will still exist. Um, and they have existed for years and haven't been resolved. And, and I don't see any other alternatives. Um, and, and I just really needed to share that today as the debate and the contemplation continues about the merge between Greater Glens Falls Transit and CDTA. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I hope North Warren was invited to go to Warrensburg as well, or is it like... Lake George. Yeah, I, will, Lake George. I will double check with Lake George. Okay. And I did see the, I went, I attended the National Honor Society induction last night and I saw the guidance counselor and talked to him about the summer youth program. He's, he's new. And if I may, is it correct if we get enough people, they could perhaps have a crew chief and they can do their own projects up in our area? It seems to be we haven't had enough kids from North Warren enrolled to really be effective. Yeah, we would we would love to have more students or youth enrolled and more work sites there. So okay. we are open to you know figuring that out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Wayne. Okay. Go um, for it. Go for it, huh? I, yeah, uh, your, I love uh, the the coloring of your, your new annual report. Well that's that's great. Sarah. Well that's actually it really is very uh it's uh, very photogenic. <laughs> well, I, I will yeah. I will say that I, I'm a uh, my undergraduate degree is from Skidmore, and these are Skidmore colors. And I looked at this first, and I thought, wait a minute, you know. But um, I was not saying they're North Warren. There you <laughs> go. But, All right, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, there's uh, there's four requests for committee action. Um, before you. Uh, the first is to enter into a contract for um, uh, cloud based software. We, uh, Ethan, secured a grant to get a, a mobile wash station for uh, invasives. And part of that purchase was the, uh, you know, a year of monitoring uh, and uh, uh, cloud based maintenance uh, if uh, and troubleshooting. And the purchasing office and the auditor's office says that is a service so that we had to break it off the purchase price and do a separate contract for just the the maintenance, uh, the, the warranty basically on it. So that's what you have in front of you. Uh, there's a, a agreement um, or there's there's the original software setup fees and whatever. And what asked the committee's consideration to enter into that contract is uh, funded through a capital fund uh, grant program. Any Motion by McGowan, seconded by Smith. Uh, discussion, Mr. Leggett. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So this 2,600 is not covered by the grant? It is. It's, uh, it's covered, it is a procurement issue. We had, it was under a line for um, like equipment and supplies, but then to support that, which is a contract for the data uh, that's associated with this mobile Okay, so the funding is going to come out of that grant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There's no real practical implications. No, just the administrative thing. Okay, Chairman, if if I could, and, and the contract has already been approved, right? This already went through the board by resolution, correct? And yeah, yeah. This yes. is just a technicality with the we're voting on something that's already been approved by the yep, board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, you you know, I, my, I, I'll, I'll second that. I, I'm not a, I'm not aware of it before today, but let's vote on it. And if legally we don't need it, because I think we can maybe just modify the underlying contract without a new resolution. But since I haven't dug into it, let's just if the if it's okay with the committee to vote on it, if it's passed, I may just legally pull it, and then uh, just do a. Contract modification. Keep it simple. No, Wayne. Um, you know, that'd be great. The auditor required this. Yep. So I, I, that's why it's here. So no, I understand. And, a, I, and I'll coordinate sure. with all the respective parties. And there's a motion in the second on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's approved. Number two. Resolution 735 of 2022 authorized occupancy tax uh, allocation to the department for the um, ICE. Uh, uh, bubbler uh, uh, education program and, and materials. Um, the money was put into the department, um, but now we need to move it from a revenue code to 
so we can actually use it. So that's what the resolution request here is uh, for uh, uh, move that out of the revenue code and into the 8020 budget. Make it a motion. That's Supervisor Wild, second by Supervisor Strau. Discussion. All those in favor? All right. Number three. Number three is this was um, we had a request to add this to our agenda. Um, and apparently there is some amendments to the uh, MOA with the regional planning board. Um, and um, I don't know if the county attorney wants to weigh in on it. It looks like that the change is actually, um, and Larry, correct me if I'm wrong. No, you, I know you got it because you talked to uh, Ryan, Attorney yeah. Dickey, so yeah. go for it. The, um, it really takes the discretion and, and the review of expenditures uh, out of the out of the budget officers, um, uh, you know, purview, um, and that the uh, regional planning board would identify uh, projects. They would identify what the county owes, and the county really has no say in it. Um, and so, I, I would ask that that somebody, budget officer or whoever, um, really give this some careful consideration because it seems to take some of the um, review at the county level um, as, as, and how it would impact the county budget and the negotiation of, of what the county feels is their fair share. And, and um, so I, I just, just a little concerned that, you know, this just came and, and we really haven't had a chance to discuss it, so. Yeah, I, I, would, I would, my legal recommendation is either it gets withdrawn or if there's a vote, I would recommend a vote no because I don't believe what's being requested the county may legally authorize, which is having another outside entity determine what the county's going to spend. Right. And, and maybe an alternative is to just carry it to the next meeting and have some discussion with the regional table planning it. board. Just table it. That's... Go ahead. Okay, was there a timing related to this agreement that, that we're not going to have an agreement if we don't do something this month, like typically happens? No, we just passed the, they, there is a new agreement that's in place, and this is amending the new agreement that was just put in place. Okay. This would amend the new agreement that was just put in place. So why don't we move it to uh, a discussion item for our next monthly meeting, if that's uh, okay with the board. Okay. I don't, I'm almost thinking we should say no, to kind of force the discussion between the two organizations. Okay. So we're making, if I make that. Amendment. If you would well, why don't we just make a recommendation they come in? Ask them. To be with Larry? Spoke out of turn, but oh, here, right? Yeah, come come here. If it's sure. Be, if it's before us, you know, like it, no action. Let's go to discussion. It may be more efficient for Wayne and I to follow up with them directly. And and, and if there's a need, then we would encourage them to come to the next committee okay. meeting. <clears throat> It, and the main so, sticking point is that there should be some review of each one of the counties that's involved yeah. with them to be able to have a little go back and forth on the budget items, right? That's the point. Right. Uh, the county should know what is going in the budget um, and not have an outside entity say, this is what you're going to pay uh, without any input into that process. That's the nut here. And so... Um, However, if you want to say no, that's fine. If you want to uh, carry it as a pending item uh, for the next meeting and, and the county attorney and I will try to uh, carry this forward and, and bring back information. Supervisor Leggett. And our contribution to the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board really isn't that significant, is it? I would ask the budget officer on but that. Is it it's like under 5,000 or something? Oh, it's about 13. Is it about 13? 12 or 13. Okay. So is the consensus of the board to carry it over to next month for a discussion item? Great. Okay. Sounds good. Number four. Okay. Number four is, um, again, uh, out of the ARPA funds, Resolution 735 of 2022 authorized 100. Um, no, that's, that's the wrong one. Sorry about that. Too many resolution numbers. Um, resolution 324 of 2022 
um, authorized $100,000 to the department for uh, activity related to the bikeway. Um, we have a study going on that that Aaron is uh, Aaron that Ethan is working on, and when that is completed, these funds would help to implement uh, some of those recommendations. So, twenty thousand dollars was put into the department budget instead of the full hundred. Again, I don't know why that happened, but that um, because there was not a purchase order against it at the end of the year, it went to surplus. We just want to reappropriate that so it doesn't go back to the you know uh, unappropriated surplus and put it back into the AD twenty one budget for this year. Wonderful. So Wonderful. that's a request. Thank you. So, so, it's twenty thousand was actually transferred. There's still eighty thousand sitting on the balance of the of the so reso. The appropriation is eighty thousand. No, the the appropriation here is is twenty. Twenty was put into the department budget. The rest is still sitting in the ARPA funds. Okay. So and that twenty went away at the end of the year, and now I want to reappropriate it. So we have a motion to that effect. Uh, Supervisor Strauss, seconded by Supervisor Wild. Uh, any discussion? What's happened with the other 80? It's still sitting in the ARPA funds, and we would, uh, I guess. Did, did any of the 20,000 20, that was appropriated in 2022 get spent? No. So you just want to allocate... 20,000 or you want to allocate the whole 100,000 in 2020? Well, there is a, the Reso 324 allocates all 100,000. Why only 20 was put over, I don't know, but um, I want to at least make sure we keep the 20. And because according to the county treasurer's office, that 20 got washed at the end of the year. Right, if so, it didn't get spent, it would fall to the fund balance. Right, so I want to, I want to reappropriate that back in and we'll worry about the other 80 when we're ready to spend it. Okay, so you're only talking about 20,000. That's correct. Sorry, thank you for the- No, 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 that's, it's a little confusing, so. Supervisor Leggett, do you have a- Okay, so we're, we're it's just 20,000 we're talking about today. The carryover from, from 2022 <laughs> budget, yes. And then we'll take care of the, from ARPA into planning at another time. Correct. We already have the authorizing reso 324 of 2022. So great. That is somewhat clear. So <laughs> could we, <laughs> so could we have a, a motion to that effect? Uh, we do, we've yeah, yeah, done yeah. okay. All those in favor? All right. Okay. Opposed, don't oppose. Uh, uh, good, thank you very much, Wayne. I appreciate it. The uh, uh, Jim. Uh, well, can we go over the annual report? Sure. It's on the agenda. I don't know if you want to sure. do it now or later. Uh, why don't uh, <clears throat> Why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Okay. Um, Sarah did a little screen presentation. I handed you all a copy of our annual report, um, and we're going to tag team this real quick. Um, the uh, I think when you look at it, the uh, going to I'll I'll just use hers up there. Um, we received roughly 800,000 in grant money. We allocated the ARPA funds, our staff time distribution. Uh, we spent, you know, the tables in here, you can look at it. I think um, ARPA really significantly uh, impacted our hours. Um, and uh, I think that had an impact on some of the other things that we were trying to do. So, well, Sarah. And the under section 239 uh, of general municipal law, the county has to refer has to review projects, refer to it from local municipalities. Um, the, um, the total number of projects was 340, and that's the distribution of, of where they, uh, again, this is tables in your, uh, in your hard copy. Um, so uh, Patricia did, Predominantly, most of the reviews that has now switched over to Ethan this year. It's lucky of Ethan. And uh, so, uh, one of the things I want to do going forward with this is we have some intermunicipal agreements with some of the municipalities to reduce the number of projects that come in that clearly don't have any county impact just by their nature. Um, I want to uh, review those, Ethan and I, to review those agreements and see if we can put more in place because um, I believe probably. Out of 340, probably 320 were no county impact right off the bat. I mean, you know, so it's it's just a paperwork trail 
to yeah. satisfy compliance with uh, 239 at the local level. And the impacts of that could be pretty important on the local level is because the 239 review process isn't clearly understood by people. And it's often the last step that someone could take. So there is the possibility of unnecessary 239 review pushing the pockets back for a month. And we know that from a development perspective, that time is money. Um, so we can find efficiencies on our end. And, and actually, yeah, I believe it is North Elba. They had a housing project that they were going forward and they failed to do their 239 review. And the Article 78 has declared that project invalid. And they're having to go, maybe they're going back through, I don't know, but the courts did decide because they did not follow 239 that that project was removed as uh, and declared ineligible. So, but it does come rear its ugly head every once in a while. Not to get off Go track ahead. from the report, but on those, the Down District Planning Board would have a applicant before them. They front onto a, a county road, perhaps, and that's what triggers it. Yeah, come down yeah. to here, or in here, zoning administrator administrator should have referred that before the town takes a final action. The county planning agency, which is the department, um, must uh, submit a uh, must have the opportunity to review it, um, and what's Somewhat interesting is the county has 30 days to respond. Um, the courts have recently said that it could be 60 days, and if the town still hasn't taken an action, and the county then has a comment that they have to, uh, you know, take that into consideration, even if it's past the 30 days. So, but legislatively, uh, we have 30 days to do a, a response. And so the the whole deal is we want to minimize the risk at the local level for some of these projects that would, you know, if they didn't get reviewed, they didn't get sent down for whatever reason, it just doesn't leave, it doesn't leave them open for an Article 78 on those grounds. So, um, okay, under the uh, community development side of the office, um, we've worked with, you know, we're continuing the countryside project, which has been in gestation since 2014. Um, in various iterations. So that one is actually in construction. Hopefully we'll be done this year. Um, been assisting the town of Chester with a study of the Pottersville Water District. Um, part of the federal requirements is our uh, review of the fair housing plan. We uh, redrafted that to comply with the current rules and the, uh, that was adopted by the board. And the housing study is underway. Um, Julia Smith from Nova Gratic will be here in April um, for a four day site visit um, and we'll meet with some of the uh, housing providers in the area. And uh, so we look forward to that visit. They are doing the housing needs analysis and we're moving that forward. Um, so when I, uh, I had a long talk with her earlier in the week, she's really, really deep in this. Oh, absolutely. I, I had an hour and a half Zoom meeting with her and it's, yeah, um, you guys did she's well. intense. Yeah, you yeah. did well then. <laughs> in, in a good way, in a good way. Um, so um, the next few pages I'll, I'll put over to Ethan. Okay. Um, it's like we're uh, talking about water quality here. Uh, so we've been doing the um, DEC and Empire's um, Environmental Facilities Corporation septic replacement program. We're in our second round of funding for that. Um, in our office, uh, Gina Martin and Mark Fitzgerald have been administering that very diligently. Had a lot of good impact. Um, this does tie in with the Lake George Park Commission's uh, septic inspection regulations. Uh, basically, our program is 250 feet, theirs is 500. So right now we're exploring ways of different stakeholders to figure out how to make those two geographies align. Uh, so we're hoping to, you know, we have communicated to elected officials to get more funding, we're anticipating that we're going to need about another million dollars in this program. So we have reached out. And I know that the full board has passed a resolution in uh, requesting additional funding for this. Um, so that's ongoing. It's running pretty smoothly. Um, the watershed action plan this is a joint effort um, headed with Queensbury and the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board. Um, Lake George is a unique entity from a planning perspective because there's three different counties uh, there's the Lake George Park Commission, there's the DEC, there's the APA, uh, there's a, a massive number of jurisdictions involved with this. It also happens to be in the Lake Champlain Basin, which is the EPA designation. 
Um, so this planning effort has been going on for some time, and it's just trying to understand what are the threats to the environmental quality of Lake George. And there's a very clear understanding that the environmental quality of Lake George is linked to our, you know, economic and social vitality in this area. So this is a really good effort to do on a regional basis. Um, water quality committee meetings, this is headed by the um, Stolen Water Conservation District. This has been a good opportunity for us to stay in touch with different lake associations and lake groups, figure out what their needs are and see if there's opportunities to leverage their expertise or provide help uh, from the county perspective. Again, water quality being a huge driver of our economic prosperity. Um, and then, our work with aquatic invasive species continues in the Scruton Lake watershed. Um, after a contract delay, we do have our Scruton Lake aquatic invasives program underway. Uh, this will be a two year effort to both manage the milfoil uh, and then pilot the use of the CD3 unit, which is a mobile unmanned decontamination unit. This thing's going to go be put at various locations. And it's an attempt to do uh, sort of fill a gap that's left when college age uh, boat stewards aren't stewards are not available hours of four and seven o'clock at night when most people are coming off waterways they're not allowed to use a, a high pressure hot water boat decontamination unit so we're piloting this unmanned thing this was using uh grant money um so we're looking forward to you know convening appeals from the nature conservancy and paul smith and some other groups to figure out if this thing works with the idea being that it has the potential to save a lot of money for all of our municipalities so it's a significant investment uh as many of these waterfront supervisors know the amount of money spent on managing aquatic invasive species and paying for stewards is you know it's anywhere as 50 70 hundred thousand dollars a year uh so if we can figure out how to save some money or develop some efficiency in this, I think we'll all benefit with our taxpayers and our environment. Um, and this next slide is just about some of our collaborations with the uh, Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board. Sarah has been doing most of this work, sort of uh, using her skills of GIS to connect, um, involve their analysis and really visualizing uh, important data for decision makers. Um, we updated the SEDS under their leadership. Uh, this is really uh, the SEDS, the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. This is federally uh, required. In the past, it was sort of a you know copy and paste document. Now uh, we're finding that we're able to keep this up to date, and it's having a lot. Um, it's positioning Warren County to receive federal money better than ever before. Um, there are speak to these other ones. Um, so we finished up the quantifying phosphorus reduction project, which was a multi-year project to put some actual numbers with a number of um, phosphorus reduction projects identified out of the Lake Champlain um, basin. That was a big <laughs> project. Um, having those numbers will assist with receiving grant funding. Um, and that is just about wrapped up. Um, the dashboards, which I think most of you have seen on the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board's website, we have a series of economic, uh, demographic, school enrollment dashboards um, with uh, census information and other economic information. Um, and then uh, a big project, uh, the tail end of this year was uh, assisting with the technical component of reviewing um, the FCC's broadband data. They've released broadband availability data at the individual address level. So we assisted with um, reviewing that information and providing feedback back to the FCC. They have incorporated a number of our proposed changes, so that's encouraging. Uh, Supervisor Leggett. Yeah, Sarah, on that, those dashboards, which are, are beautiful, they don't list all the towns within those five counties for um, some of the features I noticed. Um, is there a reason? Um, so, some, so some of the information uh, is available at the municipal level. So the community dashboard should include all of the municipalities within um, the five county region. Um, 
some of the data is not available at the municipal level, is only available at the county level or a different, a different regional level. So it depends on the particular data set. Um, but the in the community dashboard, um, the data should be available at the municipal level. At the, on the school dashboard, it should be available at the school district level. So it would be for North Warren School District. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to. Thank you. Help walk through them because I know there's a lot of information in those dashboards. Um, to touch on the transportation very quickly, you know, Wayne served as liaison to AGFTC. Um, and, you know, under Wayne's leadership, we've been able to coordinate on important county issues, EV study, and uh, various other topics. Um, we're doing a trail connectivity study to the Northern Borders Regional Commission. You know, we were awarded this for the first time in, you know, it was August. It's taken, uh, you know, a lot of support from our legal team and our local development district to get this underway. Um, but now we anticipate having a contract in June for a trail connectivity study for $200,000. This will include, um, the basic thrust is how do we connect Lake George, the Queen of American Lakes, to the Empire State Trail in Washington County, which is the largest multi-use trail in the country. Uh, and that is via the Feeder Canal Way Trail and the Warren County Bikeway. So we've engaged all the various municipal stakeholders and other organizations, uh, uh, Adirondack Cycling Advocates, Feeder Canal Alliance, um, our uh, Kevin Hajos, the DPW, get that RFP and project designed so everyone's happy. Uh, and that's currently um, our person agent is working on getting that out uh, to qualified bidders. And then the Rural Workforce Transportation Plan is another effort we're working on collaboratively with AGFTC and Lake Champlain and Georgia Regional Planning Board. Really, um, just to echo what Liza said earlier on in this committee meeting, it is of critical importance that we have, um, you know, effective transportation networks beyond just private automobiles in our county. Um, you know, even if we don't have bus service to each individual municipality and hamlet the economic returns will benefit all warren county residents through increased commercial activity sales tax receipts availability of businesses to hire lower wage workers that couldn't afford private automobile and that will all be contributing to warren county's economy in terms of occupancy tax and sales tax um and uh that's it for no, nope, there we go. The art bot. Uh, I think this has been on everyone's radar for some time. Uh, we just wrapped up, I think, our final art meeting. Uh, people put in an awful lot of time. Uh, you know, some counties went a very simple way and did some, you know, county projects. We spent a little over half of our money on, on basic county projects that were well needed. Uh, then we also did reach out to the community and work on spreading the money out to uh, organizations and projects that wouldn't normally receive county support. Uh, that was a very deliberative and time-consuming process. Um, it took a lot of different departments and a lot of staff time, uh, but I think the end result is something that is having a positive impact in the community. And as we start to get this money out the door, I think we're going to hear some success stories that we can all be uh, pretty happy with. And very quickly with the Climate Smart Communities, uh, again, working with uh, Tammy, uh, Lorenzo, the purchasing agent, and um, uh, Scott Rogers, we have started introducing electric vehicles into our municipal fleet. Um, we are in the tail end of municipal center energy audit. It's going to uh, try to help us understand if there's cost savings for taxpayers and also reducing our energy usage in this building. And then the organics management plan, which we designed the, the program and got the funding for, we passed that off to uh, Thomas. Uh, Bazo is doing a very good job of that with DPW to understand how we can start recycling organics. And just as a side note, too, we will be incorporating some degree of sustainability elements into the comprehensive plan. Um, just really as a, a best practice and uh, money saving effort for our county. Okay, letterboxing. Um, this year, we last year, we launched the Historians Challenge, um, which, and we kept the first wilderness letterboxing trail going as well. We distributed another 4,000 passports approximately this summer, in addition to the 4,000 the previous summer. We had about 100 new finishers this summer. Um, here's a sampling of some of the um, 
feedback we've gotten, I've gotten an enormous number of thank you notes, which is always really fun mail to get in the summer, as well as people, you know, come the vast majority coming in person to get their certificates, but we do provide the option to do it online or via mail. And it's always fun to, to get letters and cards. Um, so fun program, more than likely, we're going to um, skip here so that we can coordinate uh, in 2024 with the um, both the bikeway study and the 250th uh, so beginning of the 250th Revolutionary War celebration. But we have another fun thing coming up for this summer. Um, it will still have, we'll put these boxes back out in the spring. Lots of people started last year and didn't finish up. So, um, so our stories from open space project. Um, I know I haven't talked about this recently, but this is going full steam ahead. Uh, for those of you who are not on the occupancy tax committee, uh, this we received um, some money uh, in two rounds of funding from the occupancy tax committee to help fund this project. It is a collaborative project and it's student driven. So the uh, occupancy tax funding we received is funding primarily stipends for students as well as some software um, costs. But we're partnering with a little um, collaborative media firm in Saratoga County to retired guys who do not charge uh, for their time. They have put thousands and thousands and thousands of hours into this project pro bono. Uh, we currently have seven student interns, and we are collaborating um, with multiple uh, academic institutions. Back this afternoon, we have um, a meeting with a professor from Cornell. Um, we've had multiple meetings with um, faculty at the State Museum, at Paul Smith, Skidmore, uh, Union, Plattsburgh, um, and and many local students involved. These are the 10 projects that we're working on over the course of this year. Um, the Warren County Story Cloud is going to be uh, an, an audio GPS triggered tour. Um, we're planning for the launch of this in conjunction with the opening of the Johnsburg Historical Museum, which is currently scheduled for July 4th. So if everything stays on schedule, People will be able to um, enter Warren County, uh, crossing the Hudson River. They'll get their first audio um, triggered narrative. We're hoping to engage local historians as well as other public figures in the communities. We're writing scripts, um, and they'll they'll learn about points of interest as they drive between um, the the county line all the way up to the museum. Um, and we're hopefully time allowing, we're going to do this on all of the roads leading to uh, the museum for July 4th. And then we'll continue expanding it from there with additional locations. So we're in the beginning phases of testing this, writing the scripts to record. There also, there also will be a visual component. Um, it's all, you know, mobile friendly on people's phones and apps they'll download. So you just need cell service. Nope. We, in fact, um, oh, no. <laughs> we, we thought of that. We actually interviewed quite a number of companies and did a lot of research to find a company that would support this service without requiring cell service. So we are using a software that is used um, widely by the National Park Service. They don't, you know, many national parks do not have cell service within the park. So um, we're still going to do very thorough testing, but it it uh, is designed to work without cell service. So we'll see. So um, on the GIS front, our big uh, accomplishment, I guess, launch of 2022 was our Warren County GIS hub. Um, this was, is a new website where we've been able to consolidate uh, all of our hard copy maps, data downloads, and our array of apps um, by topic all in one location. We've had really good feedback um, on it. It's heavily used. Uh, so we have, I don't know, <laughs> multiple dozen apps at this point, but for our 
our dozen most widely used, we had just under 600,000 site visits to those apps combined last year. So the GIS is, you know, continues to be um, heavily used in web and mobile environments. Uh, a few of our projects this past year, we continue with infrastructure mapping and, and slowly transitioning DPW over to maintaining infrastructure data and GIS. It's <coughs> challenging because they're short staffed, um, but we're we're doing little bits where we can. We launched a number of citizen report apps uh, last year. We have a, a trail condition reporter. We have storm reporter. We have a safe pace app for the sheriff's department where people can report traffic concerns. So those have been um, well received. Um, we updated our recreation mapper uh, to provide some additional functionality and just keep current with software. Um, and we are continuing to expand support for milfoil field data collection. This has been a really successful program uh, that allows um, viewing of uh, real-time um, milfoil harvest data on a number of lakes, uh, as well as just provides great data for, um, for analysis um, and making sure that we're spending our, our uh, invasive money effectively. We also did a build-out analysis for the town of Warrensburg that started as a collaborative project with the GIS class at Skidmore. Um, and then we finished it up in house. Um, we haven't actually presented that, but maybe we will one of these days. Okay, I'll turn it back over to. Um, you know, these are, it's in the report. We're running a little late on time, so I'm not going to. Uh, these are ongoing projects that, that we're going to have for 2023. Um, again, it's in the annual report, so uh, I'm not going to belabor it. Okay. Um, Let me skip you up and so you can. Okay. What I wanted to do, and it's in the back. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this. This is my 42 years here uh, of what we've done. And, and this is kind of a, a segue into uh, when I walk out the door, this is a kind of a, a background of what's been going on. Um, we've put a little over $36 million worth of investment in the county and in, in between housing assistance, economic development, and public facilities and resources. Um, and in there is the um, funding distribution uh, by municipality. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead. The housing program, uh, that's one of the, the big ticket items, over $15 million of housing assistance over the years. We have not had an active housing program since around 2010, uh, but we did almost 2,000 units of housing rehab and 66 units of new construction uh, for income eligible uh, recipients. And again, this is some of the breakout of uh, between the first wilderness and, and other uh, programs that we did. Um, so keep going. Want to leave some time for Jim here. Um, and also in here, um, believe it or not, there's been 42 different people in 42 years. So um, some of us are still there. and. Uh, it's 113 different grant awards. Um, as I said, the grant awards total a little over 36 million. Um, using economic multipliers, that's about $102 million worth of economic benefit uh, within the community. So um, that's all the details of that. And more are in the in the hard copy of the report. Very, very impressive document. Uh, very powerful. Uh, Ethan, Ethan, Sarah, and Wayne, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Jim, Jim is up next. Jim is going to remind us of the factors that are important uh, to attract industry to our to our community. So. Stop the radar from us. <laughs> well, I'll go fast. I understand uh, you got to go, but I, I first want to just bring up the data on where we stand from an uh, economic standpoint. Um, the fundamental economy here is continuing to be really strong. Um, we're essentially at full employment. I don't, think, I don't know when the last time Liza went through that number, but uh, we're at 4.6% unemployment in the recent statistics. We've never been above five. 
other than during the housing crisis or during the pandemic uh, in the last 20 years. We're at full employment as an economy and have been for a long time. In fact, we have a deficit of workforce, but that's a better problem to have than many people who are unemployed. Uh, business formation remains vibrant. This is what the thing I just handed to you will give you a, at least a snapshot to see. Those represent active business inquiries that we are uh, engaged in supporting across the county. First sheet where it said, um, you know, business activity, but there are roughly 50 new businesses formed in Warren County in the first quarter of this year. That tracks very closely to the number that has been uh, the trend for the last several years. The EDC is roughly engaged in a little over 10, usually between 10 and 20 percent of those. They've either reached out to us or they're strategic enough for us to try to engage ourselves in those. Well, I'm happy to take any questions on those, but you can see that they're well spread out throughout the county, roughly one third in the city, one third in the town of Queensbury, and one third in the rest of the county, which is the balance that we look to uh, develop. The current uh, business activity is strong. Um, the EDC is particularly focused on, besides supporting that core activity, also engaging in a lot of the other things that you see here. We're so well served, even though Liza's only here for a few minutes, you know how good she is. And uh, I, I work with many of my peer counties. We do not. We are so much better off with the support we have in our workforce development here than many of our peers. The same is true of the planning department, by the way. It's a spectacular array of things that they produce and the value that they've created. Um, we're trying to couple our efforts as much as we can to collaborate on things like that. You know, Wayne and I spent a lot of time, for instance, on the North Creek sewer over the last year or two. <laughs> Uh, that actually got over the you know the goal line of the district has been formed. There's a lot of things that go on when we're able to align around these areas. It's important because these new areas of housing and transportation and uh, child care are going to require that kind of assistance. To that end, uh, during the uh, pandemic, I think it was actually uh, you, uh, Mike Wild, who, who helped us organize an activity where we got all the economic development organizations in the region together. And we were meeting regularly. That continues today. Monthly, we, we call it the Warren Washington County Strategic Economic Alliance. It's made up of the Chambers of Commerce, all the IDAs, all of the uh, LDCs, all anybody who has economic development in their role or title. And the goal is uh, the chamber, I mean, the uh, planning board also participates. Um, the Warren, I mean, the Lake Champlain, Lake George. We're trying to make sure that what we do is communicate with each other well enough to collaborate and align. We all have a role to play in this. Not one of those organizations can support economic development by themselves. And quite honestly, it works best when they're all kind of lined up in the same way. I'm raising this because there's been some conversation about one of those entities, the LDC. I, I want to give you some facts. Um, I'm not a politician and you guys get to operate in that sphere. But I think it's important for you to actually know the real factual basis of what's been raised. Uh, Wayne was Wayne has a lot of his history. This organization was formed more than 30 years ago with a series of community black grants. And in fact, he just showed you what some of that historical support that was with predecessor to the LDC was really oriented at, which was direct assistance to Warren County residents primarily around housing and residential uh, issues. Once those community block grants had met their original objectives, they were able to be essentially repatriated and repointed. And one of the activities that was developed by the LDC was a revolving loan fund. Uh, I took a look at the history of the revolving loan fund because there were some claims made about it recently that I just don't feel like actually properly represented. Um, I, I shared with you a map of what where the current loans are, but over the, the history of the loan fund, there have been almost 50 businesses in Warren County that have participated in them. Some of them are, are not notable unless they were in your community. Some of them are incredibly notable. She labels was a, a Warren County LDC loan recipient in its inception. It now employs scores of people in Queensbury and is a globally recognized entity in its field. Davidson Brothers Brewery has kind of gone through the full arc. They were a big player and now they're kind of gone back to their original roots, but for a while they were huge. The Sports Dome is in there. Martha's Dandy Green. Martha's has been a recipient of LDC funds more than once. And its growth as a nationally recognized brand is in part due to the LDC. That's the history, okay? The, the loan fund was designed to try to help entities that were either not commercially viable or needed additional support beyond which they could get from banks. It, by definition, is a high-risk entity. We're there to support initiatives that might not otherwise exist without us. That means there is risk. 
We walk into it and there is risk. In fact, the banking community wants us to put this in front of them as a funnel to them. Any healthy ecosystem economically has this kind of feeder system for them, and that's why they participate in the process as part of the financial review board in front of these loans. They help us evaluate what is a reasonable risk to take. But at no point will this loan portfolio ever perform at 100%. If it does, it's not working the way it was designed. Some of these entities are not going to succeed. But this one actually performs pretty well. Over its life, more than 80% of its recipients have either retired uh, or met their objectives from the loan. Today, um, right now, we are going through uh, a relative dearth in applications. Why is that? Well, I looked at the history. Three times in the last 20 years, there have been multiple year periods where there were no or very little loan application traffic. One was during the housing crisis. Another was during a recession in the early 2000s. We're going through a very similar process. We just went through the most significant economic storm we've had in our adult lives. And the response to that from the federal government was dramatic. They, they infused billions of dollars into the greater economy, including our own. You just saw that you handed out half a million dollars to small businesses in your own ARPA process. That was the right thing to do. I don't know if every one of them was the right thing to do, but the, the idea was the right thing to do. Okay, That was a better use of uh, those funds when they were available for only that period of time than pointing somebody at the uh, revolving loan fund that had been there for a long time and was going to charge somebody 6 or 7%. If somebody's going to give you a grant, if somebody's going to give you a low interest loan, it's better. We actually steered them that direction and said, why don't you go this way? And only if you can't get what you need there should we talk more. So the, the dearth is by design. Don't let anyone convince you that this tool is not effective because there were other tools for a short period of time that were even better. Now, those are all going away. Each one of them is timing out at their own speed. Lake Champlain, Lake George Planning Board's uh, revolving loan fund, which was pushing money out at less than 2% for a significant uh, period over the last several years, has largely exhausted those funds. They'll now go back to a market-based revolving loan fund, just like we have, and we'll see that demand continue to pick back up. What have we done during that period of time? Go ahead. They had a hard time they did. loaning money. They did, because there was a lot of money available. And we were trying to make sure that people got access to the money the quickest and most advantageous way that they could get it. The, the, speed, the, the health of our local economy is testament to the fact that these tools are working and that the agencies are working together, not against each other, but collectively together for the benefit of those small businesses in the community. But look, it's going to get harder now. Okay? We're, we're headed into some form of economic correction, whether we call it a recession or not. The interest rates continue to climb. The capital is going to diminish. We're going to be back in demand. But when the organization has prepared itself over the last couple of years, when we saw this reduction in, uh, we're your contractor, by the way. Uh, we don't own or, or even set the policy for the LDC, but we are the ones that operated at the direction of the board, which is an entity of the county. Over the last two years, what did we do? Well, we took the very hard steps of cleaning up the balance sheet. There were several loans there that were, some of them were 12 years old where the entity had gone bankrupt and we were waiting to see whether or not we were ever going to receive more proceeds than had originally been directed us. We went through the painful process of writing those down. Some of the people who actually spoke about this were voted in the affirmative to write them down as they sat on the board. It was the right thing to do. When you carry a debt for 12 years, you're not going to get any more. No one wants to do it because you get a picture in the paper that says, hey, the LDC just wrote off hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of loans. That was almost 20 years worth of bad debt we all took at one time. I wouldn't recommend that we do that anymore. That's why I said, let's clean this balance sheet and just keep it current from that whole on. And we did. The state came and did an audit during that period of time. They come every 10 to 20 years. They did a pretty exhaustive audit. It took uh, my team weeks to get them all the documents they needed. They came to every time. They put out a 20 page report. The board itself wrote a, a comprehensive uh, plan to address all those issues. They're primarily oriented at getting the uh, LDC into best practice around compliance and other practices, and we eagerly adopted those. It's all available on the website. There were no significant findings, but the organization better for the process. We updated and reviewed all the bylaws and the governance of the organization, made sure that it was tooled for the future, not just for the past. We brought in outside resources to talk about how we should potentially look to invest the additional funds we have besides the revolving line funds. 
We have heard experts in the field of child care. We've listened to people in the area of land banks talk about whether that was or was not the right thing to do and whether this was or was not the right thing for Warren Bennett at this time. We still haven't figured out what to do. But these are hard decisions. When you make these decisions, you're essentially making a generational commitment to something. We're currently carrying loans that are in some cases eight or 10 years old. You've got to be willing to stay in the game that long with whatever you're going to decide to do. These decisions matter, and I think the board has been doing a really uh, excellent deliberative process to evaluate it. During that period of time, four loans were paid off. Martha's paid off its most recent. Uh, an organization called Access Technologies paid it off its loan. Queen of Hearts, which is a pizza owned in Queensbury, paid off its loan. Parking Spider in North Creek, which I'm not sure that anybody actually thought was going to do it, paid off their loan. Okay, this is a, a cross section across the county. Big or you know, big entities, small entities, but part of our community. They successfully uh, ran the gamut. During that period of time, the job growth associated with LBC loans is roughly eight times what was projected. What was projected of the current loan portfolio was 13 jobs. Today, it is supporting 97 jobs. The most significant of those is uh, the uh, metal metal uh, go cheese entity, which is now supporting more than 40 people against a claim when they actually sought their loan of saying that they might hire as many as five or six. This is an example of the trajectory of success stories that happen when we do what we're supposed to do. Um, we do all this. The EDC does it as a contractor. We've been doing it for $50,000 a year since the time the contract was left. Never asked for additional money. There was $10,000 asked of the county to fund independent counsel of the last year. So the county is actually funding $60,000 a year instead of $50,000 a year. But that was at direction of the county because the county was looking to essentially bifurcate the legal support. So $50,000, how does that compare? If you look at the LDCs in the surrounding counties, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on their staff and on their operations. The leverage that we are getting for this investment is significant. Why does the EDC do it then? Because it's a really important tool to have in our toolbox, because it's part of the aligned structure of making sure we have everything we can possibly do to sustain this economy and create a platform for success for not just the last 30 years, but the next 30 years. And we'll continue to do this at a loss for as long as, long as you will let us. Because we really feel like, even in a year where there were no phone applications, this is a really important tool. If you have more questions about it, unlike the post star, I encourage you to call me. Because <laughs> we, will, we will spend as much time as we need go through any part of this. We are as transparent as you can be. And in fact, one of the things we spent a lot of time on is answering FOILs and public requests, which we will continue to do in good faith. I really want to encourage you to continue to support all of the tools you have because they're working. Right now, you got farmers. I know, lots of challenges. But you would have more challenges if you started taking away the tools that you have to be able to deal with them not only today, but to tomorrow. I guess that's a really good answer. I hope they put that on the front page. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Does, uh, does any board member wish to comment on uh, what uh, Jim Ceflon just said? Mr. Chairman, I do. Please do. Uh, and probably I shouldn't. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> We'd like you to. But I was not able to attend Friday's board meeting. I was ill. I didn't want to spread <laughs> what I had to the rest of the community. Um, I was extremely disappointed with the statements made by the public and some supervisors. Uh, this, these allegations were brought up months ago by one of the members of the board, one of the uh, private sector members of the board. Um, we had a discussion similar to what Jim met. It was understood, it was agreed upon by the board that the organization was moving in the right direction. And yes, there may not have been any loans given, but the reason why these loans weren't given out is in part because the federal government was giving free money. So why would a business ask to take a 7% loan when they could get free money? What it did is I was out in the public. I was meeting our constituents in the town of Queensbury. They had heard about this. I spent time trying to explain to them what basically Jim did eloquently for five minutes that I took a lot of shortcuts on. But it's a problem when we as a board and supervisors misrepresent the big picture 
and focus on little things. And it's disruptive. It creates political discourse. And it makes us look foolish. You know, I, I could go on and on. I'm going to stop. But it, it really troubles me when supervisors can take this and run with stuff when they, in essence, know better. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Thank done. you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate the comments. Uh, um, Supervisor McGowan. Yeah, I, I, uh, I would just like to explain, I think, because uh, I was one of those supervisors that uh, spoke up at the meeting. And my reasoning was, is all the identity, uh, all these other um, identities that give out money. And if we're not, you know, and I understand, because I do sit on the board, you know, why, and and I respect, uh, uh, you know, Jim, but I mean, we have the IDA, the EDC, and the Lake George, and you know, we have all these, you know, places that take tax money and, and give this money out. So why can't we downsize that a little, you know? And that was just my thought process. Wayne, did you have something? Uh, I just want to give a little bit of background on the LDC. Um, the county uh, formed the LDC, uh, late 80s, 90s, somewhere in there. As a means, uh, we ran the economic development program, small business loan program, micro enterprise housing programs. When funds would come back as loan payments, we needed an entity to receipt those that was separate from the county because then it would become program income and we could not get any more grant funds until we spent the program income. So the LDC was created to have an arm's length organization from the, the county uh, treasurer. The, uh, the department managed the LDC until the late 20, 2008, 2009. Um, and um, it was then transferred to the LDC and one or to the EDC. And one of the reasons it was transferred was PAAA requirements. And that reporting and everything that came out um, was quite honestly beyond what we could do. And um, we really needed to get that further separation from the actual county operations than, than having the department manage the LDC. Um, all the funds in the LDC are repaid grant loan funds. All right. Um, from businesses, uh, from uh, homes that sold uh, before their recapture date. Um, and the, the last point I want to make is that um, statewide, under the CDBG program, 40% uh, of the loans defaulted. We're at 20%. So I think that speaks well to the Loan Review Committee. Are they sometimes a little bit too much like bankers? Yes. But um, these are at-risk loans. Um, high risk loans, um, but we had a we've had a better success rate than than the statewide average. So I mean that's just some of the background I wanted to to put out there. Any any further uh, comment? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, like it? Yeah, yeah. The, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, sitting there at the meeting the other day, it is hard to get hits um, from the, the the public and other supervisors. But I admire those that did not um, extend the conversation and drag out a, a kind of board meeting much longer than what it needed to, to be. And we were reserved. I do wish that uh, a post star would investigate these reports and allegations a little bit more clearly so that all sides are, are heard. What Wayne had just said really puts out there an answer to the question, why are there so many supervisors on the LDC board? And when you look through the, the documents and even the audit report that came for the LDC, it's a unit of Warren County. And there's not all LDCs are formed in the same way, but ours is. So these little nuances on things. And also, if I may ask, I was at an IDA meeting the other day and the executive director talked about some economic development alliance. And I'm looking over at, at President Siplon here because it is the IDA, the EDC, and, and a few others that do get together and talk about the economic development within the county. Because altogether, each one has a specific avenue 
that they can pursue. And there's a strength in, in all of that. Thank you. Any, Jim, any, anything else? I, I do want you to remember that in the midst of all the noise, your economy is as strong as it's been in the last 20 years. That doesn't mean we don't have headwinds. We are one of the oldest places in New York, which is one of the oldest states in the country. We've got to figure out how to say yes to more people. We've got to bring more people into our workforce to be able to meet our potential. But you are in a good place. You are operating in a position of strength. That's because of your leadership, because of so many that have uh, participated before. And we are honored to continue to support you. Thank you very much. Any further discussion from anyone? Uh, Mr. McGowan, you're all set? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you going to get ready to close the meeting? I was going to get ready. Because it's not too soon to announce this, but we do have an award winner sitting in our midst from the New York Planning Federation who's recognizing them for uh -huh. a lifetime and achievement. Wow. And that is our director of planning. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Had to get that in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I please get a motion to adjourn? Uh, 